Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Ruck along with Mark Schultz with North Star Commodity. We do have cattle back to the plus side as we roll through the mid-session. Hogs are mixed, but all the grains are in the red. And Mark, it has been a tough slide here the last several sessions. We've taken a lot off corn, soybeans, and the wheat markets, haven't we? Well, we certainly have. And wheat has been probably the biggest one that has seen the uh, significant decline uh, in the last six, seven trading days. I mean, we've wiped out a lot of uh, price value here on the wheat, followed then by the corn and then the soybeans. Uh, so technically, uh, it does not look very good. Now, provided you can still be okay if you can either get some type of a re, uh, rebound here later today or by tomorrow, come back in and start trading the market back up to towards the plus side. But I believe we're on six and going on day number seven of consecutive lower closes for for the soybean market. And uh, uh, corn and wheat are, are not far behind. So we've taken out some technical support on corn. We've taken out technical support on these uh, wheat. Uh, soybeans are still holding uh, a higher right side. But uh, it has been a, a difficult time here in a downslide that's been pretty hard pretty quick here right. uh, for, for this time of the year. So let's talk about corn. First of all, July corn was below $6 before we had the China cancellation that added to it. And now we're down even more sharply. So where's the next support area that you think we hold? Oh, you're about 10 cents away from it. 574 on the July corn. That would be the low that we posted last summer. Uh, when we had our decline and we did that right around the 4th of July and then we managed to uh, get a bounce back on up. If you start taking that out, of course, then you're on the big picture. You're still more fearful that you're starting a, another leg down. And that's what we did with the wheat market. You'd start another leg down yeah. on the corn market. And that would suggest something down. Uh, if you don't want to hear this, 480, 490 a bushel, something like that. So do you expect more China corn cancellations or is this just a market manipulation to get prices to go down and then they come back in and buy? Well, we had we'd heard that there, there might be a little bit more cancellation. So uh, the number that they uh, canceled out here that was announced today pretty much fills what we thought was going to be the uh, last of the cancellations. So we think that is about it for the cancellations here. Now, they've yeah. done this before. We've done some cancellations come back in five, 10 days later, and then they're back in buying again. Um, but I think for the most part, you still have to watch your South American weather. The corn crop uh, there in, in Mato Grosso, uh, which is, controls about 50% of the Sapinho corn, still look for the most part pretty good. I think there's some dryness that's starting to develop here. We're uh, probably maybe 40, 50% through pollination right now uh, on that corn crop. You'd have to get into it, uh, continue to stay on the drier side and then start taking the crop down, production down, um, that would that is the biggest thing you need. Otherwise, in the U.S., yeah. the weather to me looks like you just shifted back to ideal conditions to get the crop put in the ground here on a timely fashion. Yeah, obviously, weather is weighed on new crop corn. Weather has been a factor here, pulling the wheat down with these rains that have fallen in some areas. And now we're into new contract lows in all three exchanges. So, you know, the wheat market hasn't done corn any favors. But how much lower does the wheat have to go here to find value? Well, it's uh, picking up a little bit of business, but we are, are getting closer to maybe getting some business done. But here's the, the problem being is, is that we have to stay down at these low levels in order to generate some type of business that's that's taking place. And, you know, there's really not a, a weather problem anywhere in the world, to, quite frankly. So uh, we, there's nothing else we can kind of hang our hat on here for the short term. Uh, once the crop gets planted, you know that it's going to probably be a good 15 to 30 days before you can even generate the next problem potential uh, on the crop. So I think for the most part, the wheat's going down. The wheat's uh, in some of the exchanges now trading below corn, uh, and that wow. runs a bigger risk that you might see more wheat going into the feed rations globally than you do with corn. So uh, the strong corn basis eventually, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more fearful down the road here. And we're below crop insurance levels in corn and wheat now too, aren't we? Yeah, and, it, and, and quite frankly, for the people putting the crop in the ground, it really doesn't matter if the product market goes down. They're all, they're going to put the crop in the ground for insurance purposes only. Uh, so they've got high prices that they already are secured and locked in. So I would suspect if the weather stays like it is on the forecast, your acreage is going to go up, not down on both, probably more so for corn, probably some for the wheat. 
and uh, uh, soybeans probably more of the lagger. Yeah. And soybeans, uh, like you said, we're holding the $14 level on the July. We've been holding $12.50 on the November beans, but for how long? Well, uh, hopefully, uh, I do have some timing potentially for a low. Uh, it should have been you know, yesterday for the beans. Uh, the corn will be either today or tomorrow. Um, now, we got to get some type of bounce back out of it. What I don't like about the market is technically it left a very negative chart signal last week on the outside down weeks, and those are bearish chart signals uh, for the market. And we certainly had that happen here this week. You need something else that tries to give it a little bit of a bounce or find out that the funds have liquidated a tremendous amount of their long positions. Keep in mind, they're long quite a few on the beans and on the soybean meal. And that's uh, that's something that's still a concern uh, down the road here. As far as the corn is concerned, uh, they probably have pared back their length size uh, quite a bit here uh, as we go into the next uh, phase here of the weather. What we still have on our time, though, is seasonals that we should get a weather scare. What we don't like is the fact that if it goes too low, we get a weather scare back up at about 30, 40, 50 cents. And we're going to say that's good enough make the sale. And that's really, I think the way the market's going to set up right now is rallies are all going to be meant to be selling opportunities. You bet. Cash market, though, still holding together? Uh, yeah, you know, the corn is still holding together. But, you know, the fact that the corn uh, basis continues to stay strong, I would tell you that's not necessarily a bullish uh, signal. I, you know, you've got to move X number of bushels of corn through before you get the new crop. And sure. if uh, if you go too long that it's not moving fast enough, then you have to run the risk that they're, they're going to come back in one of these times and the uh, elevators are, and commercials, their uh, ethanol plants are going to say, we got our needs filled and that's it. And uh, we're out of the market. And then you're going to see the cash market tumble like a, a ton of bricks. Yeah. Okay, so the cattle market, we're back up a little bit here. We've still been consolidating under the recent highs, but, you know, we haven't had a lot of cash trade to give us complete direction for this week. Boxes are still on fire. Okay, mm -hmm. so where does the market go from here with all that news in mind? Well, I think the box beef is uh, still has a little bit more upside potential here. You're still coming into uh, your strongest demand period for beef, and that runs up until about the second, maybe the third week of May, and then that's it. You usually get your uh, summer Memorial Day uh, purchases done in here. So I would say a one to two week uh, scenario, and then you should be uh, capping out on the box beef demand. Um, and pork should start seeing more of a takeover uh, going back on the demand side there. Our beef exports have been uh, lagging here, and rightfully so. When you go up this high and you look at the spread between the beef and the pork, uh, it's telling you you can just buy more beef than, or uh, more, far more pork than you can beef with your uh, dollar. And you're seeing right where our beef exports year to date right now, running about 14% below a year ago. And the pork, on the other hand, running about 6% above a year ago. So you're definitely starting to see that in the world markets as the, the uh, consumer starts to shift over to pork. And let's talk about the pork market. Um, hogs, obviously, yesterday had a very strong technical close. We got June above the $90 mark. That seemed like a signal for some of these funds to start getting out of some of their short positions. And then you add on top of that a marketing year high on exports this morning, yet we're having a tough time holding things together. It doesn't uh, necessarily look like we're going to shoot right out of here. Well, it, it, the, it's, the problem with this is the hog market already has, when you go, you're done with the April, then you got the main, then you're, most people hedge off the June board. Still have your, the premium. Yes, your June futures are out. $18, $19 premium to the cash hog index. So you've got a lot of, of this big rally already factored in. Keep in mind, you're going to come back when June uh, 14th rolls around, uh, which is what, 45, 50 days away. You're going to be sitting here. Uh, you're going to have to have the cash market to get up to where the June futures are, which are, let's call it 90 bucks. You're going to have to go up to $90 on the cash market uh, in order to to offset if that's the beauty about the, the hog futures they will go or the uh, futures will go wherever the cash index is and that's what you look at so you have this big uh premium already factored into the market so i think it's a it, it's a you may go up but it's not a good bet to bet on the fact that it's going to go a lot higher 
in, in light of the fact of what this market already has factored in. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Thanks for joining us. Mark Schultz with the North Star Commodity, and that is Markets Now.